Hello friends of IFC. Today I want to talk to you about the main project I've been working on this year, which is uh, the Data Exchange Cloud Connector for IFC, which has uh, just graduated from the beta and is now officially available on the Autodesk Construction Cloud. In this video, I want to tell you why this is so exciting and how Data Exchange can help you load uh, your IFC files easily into Power BI and create meaningful dashboards. And by the way, this is just one of the many workflows which Data Exchange enables. If you are new to this channel, hi, I'm Leila, a recovering architect and data nerd working at Autodesk. If you haven't heard of Data Exchange yet, uh, it is a new way to work with subsets of data by making it available across tools and services through our connectors. This includes Revit, Tecla Structure, Rhino, Inventor, Power BI, and through the beta program, also other tools like Navisworks or AutoCAD. For example, many data exchange users are creating data exchanges from IFC files and then loading them into Revit instead of linking the whole IFC file. This lets them extract only what they need. And the way we store the data in the Revit project is optimized for documentation, scheduling, and of course, coordination. If you want to see more great examples of what others are doing with Data Exchange, please check out our Autodesk University session, which we recorded on site. So let's get started with Data Exchange. Once you upload an IFC file to ACC, you can access the Data Exchange tab on the left, where you will see the filters. If you just upload the IFC file, note that it may take a few minutes to process until the filters are ready. Here, you can filter your IFC file based on its structure and the properties. Remember that the data exchange is designed for sharing meaningful subsets of data. You can, of course, just select all classes and export everything. But I really encourage you to be more intentional with your data. I often see huge IFC files full of just-in-case data. This is like going to the grocery store without a plan and putting everything into your cart. Your bag will get very heavy and you might run out of space in your kitchen. So think twice. You can always come back and create as many specific data exchanges as you need. Let's start creating our subset by selecting some IFC classes. Every selection is immediately reflected in a viewer, so you can always see your current selection. One thing to keep in mind is when selecting the nested classes like IFC curtain wall, all nested elements such as mullions and panels are automatically included as well. So for example, if you select IFC building, everything in your model will be included since IFC building sits at the top of the IFC hierarchy. Of course, you are not limited to the IFC classes. You can filter using the predefined types the element names, or actually any other property included in your IFC file. If you want to add more filters, simply search for the property you want and add it to your list. Once uh, we have completed our selection, we can click Create Data Exchange. Here we select the folder where the data exchange should be saved, and we can also change the name. The default name will always match the name of the IFC file. Then simply hit Create and wait a few moments. While our data exchange is processing, I want to show you something else. For the case you haven't noticed before, we can also select the IFC space class. So why is this exciting? As you know, ACC does not show IFC spaces or rooms in the viewer, but we can still select this class. Even though the viewer will appear empty, the rooms will be included as transparent geometry in the data exchange. So let's do that and create a separate data exchange containing only rooms. At this point, a quick reminder about something I mentioned earlier. This IFC file is exported so that IFC spaces have no nested elements. But remember, when selecting an IFC class, all nested elements are included. In the case of IFC space, elements like furniture may be nested by default. Currently, we unfortunately cannot exclude nested elements when creating a data exchange, but we are working on resolving this, so I'll keep you posted. Once uh, the processing is finished, we can review our data exchanges on ACC. We can inspect them and share them like any other file, but remember that you cannot download them. You can think of a data exchange like a database that lives on ACC. 
As mentioned, we also have the room geometries with all their properties, which we can now load into Power BI. Now let's open Power BI and I'll show you some basic workflows for loading data exchanges. You'll need to install the Autodesk data connector for Power BI. And if you haven't done this yet, you can find it in the Autodesk App Store. Once the connector is installed, you'll find it in the list of the available data sources. Select Data Exchange, and if you only have one data exchange, you can also simply paste the URL. Or you can just continue without URL and browse your hubs and projects. This is especially useful if you want to load multiple data exchanges at once. Once loading finishes, the data will appear in the data pane on the right. Before we start, let's add the viewer visual. Click on Get More Visuals, a search for Autodesk, and add the viewer. You can use the viewer like any other Power BI visual and place it on your dashboard. It includes detailed instructions, but I know who reads instructions these days, right? So let's do it together. Search for viewer and drag it to the first field. Even if you already see your model now and think, great, I'm done, please continue and add the external element ID to the other two fields. Make sure to pick it from the same source as the viewer if you have multiple data exchanges loaded, like in this case. This step is important because the viewer needs the external element ID to connect with the other visuals, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's add another visual now to show the IFC classes in the model. If I select any class in this visual, the selection will be highlighted in the viewer as well, because we added the external element ID earlier. Now let's add a table and populate it with a few properties. If you're unsure which properties to use, switch to the table view and scroll down. Don't worry about the empty rows at the beginning. These belong to the viewer. If you keep scrolling, the actual element data will appear, including all properties as the columns and values as rows. Back in our report, we can now start adding the data. And as you can see here, the table updates instantly. We can also filter most visuals in Power BI. For example, we can filter our table to only show walls. Then we can create a simple model checker. Show only the walls where the fire rating value is blank. Of course, we can also do the same for other properties like the type mark. This table can now be shared as a dashboard with your team. And to make it more user-friendly, you can rename columns and configure the titles in the visual settings. Now we could load a second data exchange and combine it in the viewer, but for this tutorial, we'll create a separate dashboard that shows only the rooms. We basically just repeat the previous steps, place the viewer, add the external element ID, and adjust the settings. If you don't like the appearance, for example, the ground shadow in the viewer, you can simply switch it off in the settings. And in the newest viewer version, you'll be able to save the setting as well. Now that we've added rooms, we can create more visuals, for example, one for the floor covering. This allows us to easily analyze all rooms according to their floor covering, and we can even use the same property as the color mapping for a viewer so that it colors the room according to their floor covering. Now let's create a list of all rooms, including their names and their quantities. At this point, I'm noticing that my data exchange does not include any quantities because they were not existent in the IFC file. So what do I do now? The answer is simple. I just request a new IFC export that includes base quantities. This is a setting in the IFC exporter. And if you're interested in how to do this from Revit, uh, we can cover this in a separate video. In this case, just leave me a comment below this video. For today, let's say we just received a new IFC file that includes the base quantities. We can now upload it to ACC and override the original file. As soon as the file uploads, it receives a new version number. And a few minutes later, your data exchange will also auto update as well. All we need to do now is go back to Power BI, refresh the data source, and you'll see the base quantities appear in your list. Now we can just add the gross and the net area, for example, to our list, clean up the visual, rename the names and share it with the colleagues. The sharing options will always depend on the Power BI license, but you should be able to create a link that can be embedded into a web page, including ACC. And this is what I want to show you now. When we go to ACC and select our Insights dashboard, we can add a new card, 
choose the Power BI template and paste the URL. And here we go, our dashboard is now embedded in ACC. All these cards are accessible to anyone with access to the Insights dashboard. By the way, this is our Data Exchange Public Sandbox project, which you are welcome to join. If you don't have access yet, just fill out the form and we'll add you. You'll find all the files we used today in this video in the project folder, and I also upload the Power BI dashboard so you can explore it yourself. I know this was a very basic overview and there is so much more to be said about Power BI workflows. Please don't hesitate to leave a comment and let me know which workflows you would like to dive deeper into. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.